middleweights looking to punch their ticket to a title shot. Looking back at last weekend's main event, Sean Strickland finishing Abus Magomedov and trying to get their own ball rolling in Vegas. We have Still Knox, Drikas Duplessis, the former EFC welterweight middleweight champ, the former KSW welterweight champ is Duplessis. And while his coach said that he only had the 8% oxygen ability, Drikas getting the problems fixed. He's going to be taking on the Tough Smashes champ and former middleweight champ, Robert the Reaper Whitaker. And this is a big time fight. And I can draw a lot of parallels out of some of the fighters that these two guys have faced in the past. But when you look at a guy like Drikas Duplessis, We've been hip to the hype here at Fight Night Picks for a oh, long yes. time. We made a prediction video for Drikas Duplessis, Jolton Luterbach, back with KSW. So if you don't think we've been there, we've been there. But when you look at a guy like Duplessis, a constant win streak, that Luterbach win was after the sold each loss, and he just got the ball rolling, goes back to EFC, gets a quick win, and then all of a sudden it's Maluco Perez, it's Trevin Giles, and we're off to the races. A fight of the night against Darren Till where he submitted him. His last time out against Derek Brunson. The weirdest end to a fight you've ever seen. Ground and pound, and then Duplessis like takes a breath and drinks a coffee, and then he lands one more shot, and Brunson's corner throws in the towel, which is awesome to see in MMA, because you never see it. So good for Derek Brunson's corner to save him from himself, even though there was one second left in the round. For Drikas Duplessis, we know the blitzes, we know the lineage, and we know that Robert Whitaker is going to offer him a tough test coming up this weekend. Drikas Duplessis is MMA's... Char Char Binks. I've said this all the time and I stick by it. Because when you look at what he does, it might not be the most pristine. It might not be picture perfect to where he's always having a defensive shell up. When he's throwing one hand, the other one's always up. No, he is quite chaotic, but he thrives under that chaos. And I think that's going to be the important thing because the one noticeable, I don't even want to say downgrade that Robert Whitaker's had because I think we all understand he is one of the most skilled fighters in the UFC, not currently holding a title. The guy doesn't get as many finishes as he used to, though. And I do think it's a matter of, hey, at 185, you find a lot of five-round fights. I don't think he changed his style when he was a champion, but we talked about that, right? You have to get used to fighting five-round fights more than three-round fights. And for Whitaker, he does have one of those styles that it doesn't really matter how many rounds he's fighting. He's going to have the output. He's going to have the power shots along with it. But we just haven't seen him go out there and mix. Listen, the head kick, did it drop Jared Cannonier? Yes, it did. But he didn't get the finish after that. Whereas earlier on in his career, we were seeing him getting finishes over the likes of like a Jacques Array or even a Derek Brunson. So be curious to see what level of aggression Robert Whitaker does have because he will fight moving backwards. We saw that again in the Derek Brunson fight. I think that Brunson fight is a really important one to bring up because Brunson, especially at that point in his career, was the guy who would rush forward with reckless abandon and land really good power shots when he was fighting in and technical for Derek Brunson might not be the greatest term, but you get what I mean. He was a guy who would rush forward and implement a lot more offense than defense. And if Robert Whitaker does kind of take himself back to that mindset of, hey, I'm going to have to move backwards. I'll plant my feet on my power shots and maybe I can make Duplessis pay for just moving in so much. But the thing is about Whitaker, and I'll bring up the Cannoneer fight again. The third round of that fight, there was a moment that worried me. Jared Cannoneer landed a jab on Robert Whitaker and it stood him up. Now, I don't think Robert Whitaker has a bad chin by any means, but I do think he's been in a lot of really difficult fights. He's been hurt a couple of times. So I will be really curious to see if Duplessis can get him backed up against the cage and start landing those big power shots in combination. Can Robert Whitaker really withstand those big wow. flurries? Drikas from South Africa, self-described. I mean, 33-0 at kickboxing with 30 knockouts. And he parlayed kickboxing into judo at 10. And then he went from that to fighting in, in big time. I mean, just wrestling, 12 to 14. And then he got involved in uh, big time K1. And from 15 to 18, he became a world champ in the old WAKO. So if you look at it from Drikas, you go, okay, this guy's got like a kickboxing type of lineage. We're going to see him go out there and really kind of work his fundamentals. He pressures forward. He walks heavy on his lead leg, and his, his back leg stays really light. Now, it opens up his own kicks, and he's one of those guys that can switch it up with his combinations. That's what you like at Adrikas, because he'll rip the left hook to the body to come over top. He'll finish things with kicks, whereas Robert Whitaker, you're going to have a steady jab, similar to Adrikas in the fact that heavy on the lead leg, he'll fight off the back foot or moving forward, but if he's moving forward, it's a lot more of the 2-3 with the head kick. That's kind of always been the combo from Whitaker. He's saw that work to great avail when he, he fought Darren Till, especially at the end of that fight. But if you look at it for Drikas against Till, a bit of a lesser version. Against Brunson, a bit of a lesser version. But for Whitaker, the fight that I went back and watched getting ready for this one was, you already mentioned it actually, the Jacare Souza fight. And Jacare, five-time world champion jiu-jitsu. He was on a heater. He was a minus 240 favorite, even though he was 37 years old. That was a title eliminator. 
And Robert Whitaker went into that one and stuck to the fundamentals. And he wobbled Jacques Ray with a jab. He finishes him with a right cross, but he had him in all sorts of trouble throughout that matchup. Got the win as the underdog, wins the belt, because at that point it was an interim title. Then it became the real McCoy. He beats Yoel Romero in a couple of fights. And then we're off to the races. Only the title's going away and it's going to Adesanya. If you look at it for Whitaker, though, he shut out Martin Vittori's last time out, and that was his first three-round fight in a meaningful amount of time. So now he's taking on Drikas Duplessis, who pressures a lot like Vittori in totally different ways. And if you look at it for Drikas, I talked about the fact that he has a judo pedigree. He wrestled a bit when he was a kid, but kickboxing is hallmark. That's kind of crazy because he tends to wrestle a lot in his fights, and well, that's you know kind of a big thing? X factor. In. I actually think Robert Whitaker's going to offensively wrestle in this matchup, and this is why. If Duplessis is just moving forward a lot with some of those flurries, Robert Whitaker's not great at controlling guys in the mat. We've seen and- it. Darren Till was able to pop back up. He will hold guys in the clinch. He's not great at just holding them down, but he does have that as a tool. And I do think if his striking is having a lot of success, he might at least try to feint that. Because the one thing about Robert Whitaker, I don't love it, but he has had a lot of success with it. He'll feint the takedown just to get closer to his opponent to land some of those dirty boxing uppercuts and get closer to his opponent. Now, I think the closer he gets to Duplessis, the greater chance Drakus has to win this matchup. But this fight has a lot of layers to it. For Whitaker being For- one of those guys who is thought of as kind of like the 1B to Adesanya's 1A because he's been at the top of the division for so long at this point. Yeah, I mean, tough smashes. Ross Pearson was one of the coaches at on that. 170. Drikas Duplessis, I mean, he had a loss when he was 20 years old to 32-year-old Gareth McClellan. And that one was for an EFC title. A 4-0 Duplessis loses that fight to McClellan. And that is McClellan's shot to the UFC. And during that fight, the announcer said, this is the best fighter on the continent, Gareth McClellan. And yeah, it didn't work out for him in the UFC. But Drake is one of those guys. He was over-aggressive in that fight. He ended up getting swept and he got submitted by McClellan. And his other loss is to Roberto Soldich, who I still think is great, even though he hasn't been good with one championship. You look at it for Duplessis. He was in Derek Brunson's half guard off a Brunson takedown. He swept out a half guard against Derek Brunson and then got into the guard in the first round. That stuff doesn't happen very often. So cool to see that out of Duplessis. Robert Whitaker, giant favorite in the matchup. I mean, this sets up a great middleweight fight. Obviously, you know, you had Sean Strickland calling for a shot after the Magomedov knockout loss. Where are all the Magomedov people this week? Where did they go? I haven't seen them. Robert Whitaker, we have a look over on Topology. Surprised us there to you with the fan vote. I'm going to say over or under 85% Whitaker. I think the it'll fans, be over. The fans have been all over the place this week. Slightly over. 1,224 total votes. 87% Whitaker. 45% by decision. 48% by knockout. Robert Whitaker's last loss. His second to last fight. The second Adesanya fight. He lost that one. By decision. I think Robert Whitaker does get it done in this matchup. But I think this is a way closer fight than what most people are going to tell you. I do too, but I do think there's a world where even though saying that Robert Whitaker could win like 30-27 and not be in a lot of danger just because his footwork is so good not only moving forwards, but moving backwards too with some of his evasiveness. He likes the front kick to maintain distance, and then he can set up his high kicks based off that front kick. I just like the totality of Robert Whitaker's game in this matchup, but I'll be curious though when we bring it up. Who's going to go for some of the wrestling between the two? Because they both have it in their games. But Robert Whitaker is one of the better defensive wrestlers we've really ever seen. Like, Yoel Romero couldn't keep this guy down on one ACL. So it's pretty difficult to take Whitaker down. I just really like the fight. And I'm curious to see... Is the winner going to get a title shot? Are they just going to kind of be st- or stuck uh, spinning their white wheels in this division? Who knows, but I have Whitaker. Both of us going with Gracie Grange, MMA's own Robert the Reaper, Whitaker the former champ to get the win. I think it's going to be an awesome fight. Let us know down below in the comments section who you have. A couple of title fights up at the top. You're not going to want to miss them. Keep them locked in with fight night picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into, into 